everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Stefan Bajayo, uh, Chief Marketing Officer here at Turno. I am super excited to have Stacy Patton from Hostfully here. Uh, if you don't know, Hostfully is a great PMS. Uh, you should definitely check them out. But uh, Stacy isn't just uh, an employee at Hostfully. She also is a host herself of, uh, I think you'll tell us in a minute, Stacy, but uh, a large number or good number of properties in South Tahoe. I'm so excited to have her here, help her kind of guide us, tell us a little bit about what people can learn or should know, some of the tips, tricks of great hosting, as well as, you know, the best use of technology. So, uh, Stacy, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and, and, and how you've kind of become a host in the vacation rental space, as well as, you know, work for one of the premier technologies in the space. Well, Stefan, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. And yeah, like you said, uh, currently I work for Hostfully, which is an absolutely amazing PMS system. Um, in addition to that, I manage 18 properties in South Lake Tahoe. Wow. And I've been in the vacation rental space, I think about 12 years. So that's like 84 years in dog years. And sometimes that's what it feels like. I think, yeah. Isn't there, isn't there a measure? Like, I think I've been hearing from a lot of hosts that like you can multiply the number of years you've been in the, in the industry by X. And that's really what you learn and feel like, right? Cause one year in hosting is not a year. It's a lot more than a year. So, it feels that way. So yeah, for sure. Uh, very exciting. I've been working I've worked for large companies in this industry, um, startups, and then about six years ago I started my own company. I've just been rolling with it since then. And you know, through the use of technology, I've been able to streamline my operations so much that it's allowed me to really step away and enter into this new space of like SaaS and the hybrid between rentals and the SaaS market. So exciting things, like good to, to learn new things and I've enjoyed it so far. Phenomenal. So that's really cool. You've kind of, uh, you've kind of grown your career before even becoming a host in technology in this space or around this space, right? The vacation rental space as well and technology. I guess, what was the moment you felt like you could jump into the hosting world? Like how much did you feel you had to learn before you could feel confident putting money behind it, taking that leap of faith. And then, you know, there's the one, right. And then there's the yeah. many. So like people show usually start with one, not everyone, but people start with one in many cases, realize whether it's a do or don't. And then when it's a do, they start going up in numbers. So tell us a little bit about that experience and what that was like for you. I mean, I think I was really fortunate to work for some of the larger companies in this industry. And through that, I took pieces of all of it and said, you know what? Like, I want to do it this way. I'm not trying to grow to 5,000 properties. I wanted to take just a really small number and, you know, pick all of those little pieces I learned from these larger companies and implement them in a way that felt like scalable and reasonable. And I think it was a good opportunity to say, okay, these are the things I didn't love that they were doing. So I'm not going to do that. And I think it was, it, you know, like I said, it was about six years ago. So I had been in the industry already for six years, kind of just learning and actually started in this industry as a housekeeper. Um, I got really bored at my, my job that I had before that and said, you know what, I'm going to take a leap. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name drop here, but there was a new company in Tahoe right. called Picasa. And so I just said, you know what, I'm going to take a leap. This seems like a fun, exciting place to go. So started out as a, as a cleaner in that, in that, uh, company. And within a couple months, I was, uh, the director of housekeeping for multiple, multiple States. And then through that, I, I think. Honestly, that's where I learned the most, just just really getting a good pulse on what the challenges were and fitting all those those pieces together. And so after about six years with the cost of the turnkey, I, I took the leap and said, you know what, I can do this on my own. I feel like they really set me up to do it on my own. So Right. So you got to see it from the inside and the outside and you kind of get to see it every day from the inside and the outside. Right. So. Your your role at Hostfully, give us a little bit of a sense of like what that entails and, and how you intersect. And by the way, I'm not going to just for the audience, I'm not going to let Stacy get away with saying those 
interesting little tidbits of like, I learned this and decided I wasn't going to use this and I was going to use it. Like, I want to know what some of those things are. So think about that in the back of your head as we get to those questions. But in terms of your role at Hostfully, give us a sense of like what you're responsible for and, and kind of what you see from a day to day basis. So my role at Hostfully, I really love because it's just been this great way to kind of marry things I'm passionate about, which first and foremost, talking to people all day long. And secondly, just like my my knowledge of the industry. I know I'm sure if you've met PMs before, we can talk all day long about what we do. So being able to share that knowledge, I help people onboard the property management platform. And it's just such a wide variety of people, you know, some that are brand new that are just starting out with one property or their own property, all the way up to people that have hundreds or thousands of properties. So um, I, I work with them through the onboarding process and just help them get set up. And I found that it's a really great way for everybody to share knowledge. And I think that in this process, it's helped me meet with other PMs that have taught me things I never even would have thought of and, and vice versa. So it's a pretty cool gig. I've, I've nice. pretty no, I, I love the fact you're, 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 you see everything from the, the beginner to the expert and everything in between. And I'm sure like as your passion, if you're new to this space, I'll admit I am in certain ways and definitely not a host myself as of now, but that'll probably change based on my learnings and desires as I continue to see all the passion and all the thoughts around this stuff. But enough about me. I, I really think about how, uh, how much you have to be able to to share that advice and also take the best of what you learn here and there and almost build the compendium of your own knowledge base to share. So let's let's kind of start there. What are some of the things you see a lot of newbies, right? A lot of newbies come through. What's like the number one, number two pitfalls you think that new folks go through um, where it's like you probably find yourself repeating yourself a lot? You know, honestly, I think it's just the very basic foundational knowledge of what it takes to run a property. Um, you know, it's the age old saying, you don't know what you don't know. And that's that's really it. They struggle with just like the verbiage or operational process. And, you know, I, I think the other end of that is most of these people are working a second job like this isn't their first right. and only thing they've got going on in their life. So I think that for some people that are new to this space, it can be pretty overwhelming and they don't realize all of the little pieces that you're trying to control, right? Your, your housekeeping and keeping control of inventory of your supplies, your linens, all of those type of things that are you never really thought of when you decided you were going to rent out your place. Right, right. It's almost like the, it sounds like the, the, the turnover becomes, no pun intended, but the turnover becomes fundamental to your yeah. success in this. And without having done it a thousand times, you're probably not aware of all the pitfalls, but not just the pitfalls, all of the nuances, right? Of making a, a turnover, if done correctly, should be seamless and not actually create you any additional problems, right? It's like the user shouldn't even know about it because they're not even, the guest isn't trying to understand this was rented you know, a day before. They don't really care. They wanna have their experience, right? So that said, and, and having a background in cleaning as well, I think is huge in this. When you think about like what it takes to ensure a high quality of, of cleaning standards and, and kind of efficiently managing like consumables and inventory, which you kind of just talked about, like what are some of your advice on how to do that effectively? Like what, what are some of the things you are always thinking about or you used to have to think about all the time when you were first at it and then you got it down to a habit and a science and now it's like automated i think first of all consistency is key i want my guests to walk into my properties and everything be so standardized and you know everything the same you can expect to have the same type of experience um one of the biggest things i think i i learned in the beginning was just throw out the, everything you think you know about cleaning because there's okay. more efficient ways to do it and be open to that I, I was really fortunate to have a really good mentor early in my career um, that taught me a technique called ball the wall. Um, if you don't know what that is, look that up. Um, super efficient way of cleaning. Um, but I think what I'm always thinking about is a clean house is the foundation of a good guest day. Because once you notice one thing that's out of place or not right, 
everything else falls apart. It's just pulling at that thread. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, don't skip. It's, it's going to cost you some money to do this right. Don't skimp because on the back end, if you do and you've got terrible linens or low quality toilet paper, things like that, those matter. You don't want somebody to pay $1,000 to be in your house to have one ply toilet paper. That's, right. That should be a crime. So <laughs> I, I, think, I think honestly, invest a little and, and be consistent. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think, uh, I think that's easy for, I think a lot of hosts that are trying to make margins are often looking at these places as places to cut, but in the grand scheme of things, like they, they kind of limit your potential, right? With your property, because you won't get the reviews you're looking for. You won't get the kind of like, uh, the price points you want right. because over time that wears down on your, you know, on your success. So I definitely get that. How have you been able to use technology kind of to manage your processes in other words like there's probably a lot that goes into obviously what you just mentioned alone is like inventory and you've got like um you've got questions of cleaning you've got um issues of just the turnover itself and making sure things are scheduled properly and you're doing that across what did you say 18 was it 18 or 13 18 properties so and and you and you're doing that while you have a full-time job at hostfully so it's not like a it's not like a easy peasy thing. Like you've got an entire thing going here as a business and you're working for an entire business there. How do you get to a point of automating that and kind of where, where in your life cycle as a host, were you like, Hey, this is too much. Like I can't do this full time this way. I've got to find better ways. Well, I think it was just as you kind of go along and you grow and you're trying to find ways to make that scalable, you get to that tipping point where you need a little bit of extra help. And for me, it just felt like all of the pieces were running pretty smoothly, but they weren't fit together properly. And, you know, we do live in this beautiful age of automation where there are so many tools. And, you know, I, um, I had kind of scaled back the amount of properties I had prior to coming to Hostfully and I've actually added on some more since then. And it's because I was finally aware that there were all of these other tools out there I had no idea even existed. But things like automating messaging and my inventory, I, I always know what kind of inventory is in my home through turnover management apps. And the same with my cleaners, I know where they are, who's coming and going, what's available so maintenance can come in and do an inspection. I mean, it's amazing to me what has changed in this industry just over the last decade. And we're not doing things on paper or people coming to an office anymore to check in. We're past the age of lock boxes and right. having to go out and change a lock box code. So I really do think it is being able to make other PMs aware of what tools are in your arsenal that you don't even know exist yet. So that really was what changed it for me, just being able to you know, have access to what was there and automate process like guest messaging and uh, my guidebooks, my house manual. I don't get calls on how do you work the thermostat anymore or, you know, just the little things. It's made it to where you can be pretty hands off in this industry as long as you are doing it right. You've got the right systems in place that are operating at the right time. And of course, you've got good, solid support in your operations teams, like maintenance and housekeeping. Sure. And when it comes to, when it comes to like having a solid process for those turnovers, right? How do you think folks should be budgeting for that? Cause you actually mentioned that before, you know, it was like, if you're not using a technology now, you're going to have to invest some money in some way, shape and form to have an automation. So kind of where do you see people at one point in their kind of, if you got the one home and you're cleaning it yourself, that's one thing, right? And then you've got the, I'm using a third party to clean my home. That's another, but you're going the old fashioned way of texting and trying to control that and kind of on, make sure they're there and there. And then at some point you want to get to a place where you've got automation to kind of move all of it forward. I guess, do you see a place where that just becomes untenable from the number of properties or like the user type, like, Talk to me a little bit about the personas of like different hosts 
in their evolution and like where you think technology should come in. Like, like you can go invest a lot of money in a big technology and only have one property, but I don't know if that's ultimately what you should do. Right. And then I think you can also, certain people will get to like, I've heard crazy stories about people getting to 20 properties and not having automation, which is like, yes. how, how do you even do that? I tend to err on the side of technology should be introduced relatively early. I don't think it necessarily matters how many properties you have. I think what matters is how much is your time worth? And that's really a thing to think about, especially for those folks on the littler side with, you know, one property, two properties, that this isn't their full-time gig, they've got a full-time job. That's where technology is key because you don't have the time to spend on all of these other things and managing a million guest messages or, oh, I forgot to ch um, send check-in instructions or change the lock code, things like that. So, you know, I, I think there's not one size fits all solution. Everybody's kind of got to identify that. But especially through Hostfully, I've seen what an impact it has made on especially the little guys. Of course, the big guys, you know, they've got a lot more leverage and a lot more, you know, financial kind of flexibility with that. But I think it's a sound investment right out of the gate. And there are enough, you know, different property management platforms and things out there that there's something to fit everybody's budget. There really is. And I, I think that ultimately, if that's how you start out, that's such a good foundation to build on. It really is because you're not going to face all of these other issues. Your job is ultimately going to be easier from the get go versus trying to redo a process in the middle of growth. That's that's a different beast to wrangle with. So I, I tend to think, you know, there are technology solutions for everybody, especially the little guy and, and start early. It's, it's a good, it's a good foot forward. I love, I love that point. So technology early, which I agree with you on, like, I think a solid technology foundation of any, for any business for that matter is, is fundamental. Right. But uh, I also love the idea of what's your time worth. Like if you're not defining your hourly value and then how much time these tasks take out of that, you're technically not taking into account like the major money suck of the business, which is like your involvement. Right. And, and if you can make your hours more efficient, then you get more money back. essentially. Right. Um, so that's, that's amazing. I love, I love that idea. And I think that's something people should probably think about. I'm sure that most mature PMs are probably thinking that way, but I also think that like the smaller person who's the investor moving into potentially going full time definitively needs to figure that out. I don't know if there's a magic formula out there that I don't know about. It probably is, but I like you just get so excited in the beginning on this new adventure, right. and you know you kind of forget those things because you're still in the thick of fitting all those pieces together and figuring out what needs done. And then you've got PMs that have been in this space for a long time, like me, and and we're just kind of bitter about our time sometimes. <laughs> we want it back, like no more going out on holidays and, oh. you know, answering guest calls at midnight, things like that. So I, I really do think it probably would have changed a lot of the way I was able to operate early on had I known that these technology pieces were out there for me. And so I think really, really, providing a platform where people that are new to this industry or have been in this industry for a long time and maybe need to update their operations, kind of get with the times a little bit. We just need to be able to share that information with everybody. And right now, I think that's a, a key thing that maybe we're missing is like just that exchange of information and connecting all these other PMs to to each other and, and identifying point. best practice and, and whatnot. That's a great point. Like, I guess... Is there, or do we recommend, and, and um, this is off the top of my head, um, probably maybe the companies are doing this, I have no idea. Um, do we recommend like your operations auditing? Like auditing your operations for like effectiveness and ability to, to, to potentially either put in a feature or technology or something else to improve it? Or is it like, it works, don't break it, I don't wanna touch it kind of approach. Like, do you see people who are maybe more effective than others, like go back and audit that process once a quarter, once a year. Like, I, I don't know. Is there, is that a thing? I mean, I think 
any company with a good growth strategy and a good handle on operations is constantly reevaluating. You have to. You have to to stay relevant. You have to to stay, you know, cash positive. Or you have to be willing to change. Um, right. I've seen it a lot in this industry where there's a ton of little mom and pops out there that have been in business 30 years, and those folks are afraid of that change. Sure. Um, you know, and, but more and more we're providing that level of easy technology and not something that people need to be so scared of and that helps people like that reevaluate what can i do and again it i think it all comes back down to what is your time worth if i can hand you a solution that says i'm going to make this you know manual process you have now automated where you don't really even need to think about it you got to build it out once and then this system's going to do it for you that makes it much easier to reevaluate and i do think that everybody should take a pause you know every yeah. quarter or whatever feels right for your process and just say what can we be doing better what's working what's not and if it's not working what's the solution to this yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, how much do you use feedback from your reviews to help make that a reality? Or do you do anything in additional to reviews to try and get more feedback? Because I know not every, you know, oftentimes you might get the pollers super happy and upset. You know, I'm going to go to the, the keyboard and, you know, and give my complaints. But otherwise, you know, sometimes satisfaction doesn't actually come out in every one of those reviews. So, um, to find those small little things, like what's been your mechanism to go and kind of fish those out? Because you could have a lot of, through 18, I'm sure you got a lot of bookings going on. So it's like, how do you know this is a booking issue for one property or this is a booking issue for our business? Not booking issue, I should say more like a general issue for our business and kind of divide those up. I mean, definitely reviews help. That's always great feedback on how you can improve. Um, there's a lot you know, you can get in the weeds there because you're not going to make everybody happy. Somebody, right. you know, I got a bad review recently because somebody wanted a glass key tea kettle. That's, that's not really reasonable. <laughs> so you just yeah. kind of got to pick and choose what is worthy feedback. But I feel like most of the time, you know, you know, if you've got a house that's got deferred maintenance issues and maybe you've got an owner that's not willing to put in the money to, you know, update certain things. I lean on my teams a lot. Um, I lean on my cleaning and maintenance to, to figure out, you know, they all notice things in my house sometimes that I might not. Um, and, you know, so I, I think that's important feedback. Like, hey, this would be nice if we did this or, you know, let's update the bedding here. Um, so I, I think a combination of, of reviews and also being vigilant about even at my level of owning a company, I, I am in my houses frequently and I need to be. I need eyes on it. I have sure. great support teams, but um, I do think that you set the standard when you started working with an owner or even when you own your own home, you've, you've got to be present. And that really helps to mitigate a lot of the issues and identify areas where you can improve. Yeah, no, that's a great point. It actually leads me to one of the final questions I have for you. So when you, when you, uh, you, you actually mentioned it earlier, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I swear I'm not like, you know, seeding this one, but like, how do you deal with the unforeseen? Right. I mean, it sounds like you just had an unforeseen happen and and luckily enough our technology was able to help you with that but uh which is not planted i swear we just found that out uh a minute ago but i mean how do you deal with that unforeseen and not being able to be there all the time and not being able to be focused on it all the time it sounds like a lot of trust on your providers and people who are your partners essentially i'm not sure if everyone calls their cleaner or their maintenance folks partners but essentially they are in this process aren't they yeah. They really are. And I think it, it kind of comes back to what we were talking about in the beginning, invest, invest in good people that will carry you further in this industry than anything else. You have to have a certain level of, of trust and support from your team members or your partners, whatever that may be, because this is not a one man show. It never is. Um, and, and building that process and making sure that guest experience is flawless and seamless, that is a team effort. That takes a lot of people. You know, it, it does. It takes a village in a way. And I, I really think it's just 
trusting each other. And you have to be very fluid. You have to understand that no two days in vacation rental, short-term rental space, they are never going to be the same. And you have to just relax and know that and make sure you've got the foundational structure to support that because you never know what will what will happen. Um, and I, I really do think it is. It's an investment in the right people, the right team. And who wants to work with people that aren't fun anyway? So, right. <laughs> you of know, it's, it's key. And it's a passion for a lot of people. So how yeah. sharing that passion and being able to provide the great hospitality, frankly, that you're looking to provide is phenomenal. I think it's, uh, it's credit worthy. And uh, thank you so much for being an amazing host, a great part of our community. And uh, someone who's willing to share so much of herself and her knowledge. Uh, Stacey, if folks want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do so in order to kind of like learn more of your tips and tricks and or like hear from you? Any particular uh, you can reach uh, me uh, at Stacy at hostfully.com. That's S T A C I at hostfully.com. Um, and feel free to reach out at any time. And also, if you've got information to share with me that maybe I can use in my in my own operation, I would love to hear it. I, I think, again, it is about connecting people and sharing industry knowledges and, and best practices, things like that. And yeah, I, I just kind of to touch on what you were saying, it's a pretty spectacular thing to be able to help people make memories. And and that's what we're we're trying to do and make sure that that is a good memory not a bad one so incredibly um, well said and very relevant to the conversation so stacy thank you so much for sharing everything with us today i really appreciate it i'm sure the audience does as well uh we'll definitely look forward to having more conversations in the future thanks so much for having me and let me just talk your ear off about property management i could Love do it all day so uh this was a fun way to start my day so thanks so much thanks